Nationalization of Burpees Bridge will impact future public-private sector partnerships, says GSMA. PPP urges residents to vote out the APNU AFC from the City Council to end corruption in the city. AFC is able to see to ram back in police custody this time for beating up a policeman. And in the Women's World T20, West Indies dotting grabs 5 for 5 as Bangladesh collapsed for 46. These and more right now on this our Saturday, November 10 edition of News Update. Good evening, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thanks for joining us. The Ghana Manufacturing and Services Association is urging the government to find workable solutions rather than nationalizing projects, as was done to the Burmese River Bridge. The association warned that such practices will have devastating effects on future public-private partnerships and ultimately the economy. The government has taken over and remains in control of the operations of the Burmese River Bridge. This government takeover, which Public Infrastructure Minister David Patterson claims is not a nationalization, was done to safeguard the public, according to him. Minister Patterson claimed that the temporary government takeover was done based on the Burbese Bridge Act. While the Burbese Bridge Company deems this order illegal, it has complied and has not ruled out a legal challenge. The company wanted to increase the bridge toll by as much as 360%, but mentioned that that increase will be discarded if the government agrees to extend the concessionaire's ownership of the bridge for the next 19 years. Specific to the proposed toll hike, the Ghana Manufacturing and Services Association, GMSA, affirmed that if the increase goes into effect, the cost of living in Guyana will climb sharply. Increase in tolls for the Barbies River Bridge have raised concerns in the manufacturing sector since it would certainly result in increased commodity prices. Disagreeing with the government takeover, President of the GMSA, Sham Nokta, urged the government to explore other options as it will derail investors and more so those that are interested in public-private partnerships. If as a country we are going to embrace a model of public-private partnerships for major projects, there must be an alternate way of doing things, and which includes finding workable solutions. In the proposed increased structure, the BBCI wants cars and minibuses to pay $8,040 from November 12th to cross the bridge. The two classes of vehicles are currently paid $2,200 to cross, 300 of which is subsidized by the government. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Police in B Division have confirmed the arrest of APNU AFC Region 5 Councillor Abel Citoran, who is accused of choking a police officer. Reports are that the police rank intervened when Citoran allegedly attacked a People's Progressive Party supporter at a public meeting held in Woodley Park, West Coast Barbies, on Thursday evening. According to an eyewitness, a PPP meeting was in progress and including some 300 persons when it alleged that Citaram rode towards the crowd and began to hurl explosives and derogatory remarks. Reports said that the APNU AFC councillor was warned to desist from using such abusive language, but he continued. According to the eyewitness, Citaram then went over to the other side of the road and pushed the PPP supporter. When a police officer intervened, Citaram reportedly held on to him and choked him and reportedly said no one can hurt him. It is further alleged that the APNU AFC councillor also threatened to call the Minister of Public Security and other high-ranking officials in the coalition government. Citaram remained in police custody up to late Friday evening. The 36-year-old of Lodge 121B Woodley Park, West Coast Babies, was recently sentenced to 18 months imprisonment after he was found guilty of felonious wounding committed on Nate Ram Original 54, a vendor of Lodge 64A Woodley Park. The incident occurred in January 21 where he used the wooden battered Robinjanat after he intervened in an application involving both their sons. He was subsequently released on bail on $150,000 pending an appeal. The People's Progressive Party is urging residents of Georgetown to vote out the AP and UAFC members from the City Council so that the corruption there can end. The party lead is accusing the coalition's councillors of fostering corruption, claiming they were key beneficiaries. 
There have been many calls for the town clerk Royston King and Mayor Patricia Chase Green to be thrown out of City Hall based on claims of corruption. The controversial parking meter contract was signed by them, which had given Smart City Solutions the monopoly to roll out a parking meter project in Georgetown for 40 years. There were also numerous instances of the town clerk hiring companies without tendering or even having a formal agreement. These companies were told to conduct work and then based on an engineer's estimate, City Hall will pay them. With the mayor being a part of the partnership for national unity, the People's Progressive Party is accusing her and her fellow party councillors, as well as those from the AFC, of perpetuating the corruption. They knew what was happening, but they could have easily stopped it. But they did not stop it there at the city council because they were beneficiaries of this corruption. The PPP urged the populace in Georgetown not to vote for the APNU for fear of corruption being continued. And, and frankly speaking, the old characters are camp running again, like Chase Green and the others, and she will likely be the mayor again if they win in Georgetown, and they will continue along the same path that they have started. Godfrey Brooms, MTV. News update. The Cooperative Republic of Guyana and the Republic of Korea celebrated 50 years of diplomatic ties last evening. Foreign Minister Carl Greninja has pledged the country's willingness on behalf of President Granger to continue to strengthen ties between Korea and Guyana. Kibney Jordan reports. Through our combined efforts, bilateral cooperation between Guyana and the Republic of Korea has grown from strength to strength, and the government of Guyana remains committed to working with you and the government of the Republic of Korea in advancing this program of cooperation. The celebration comes hot on the heels of the official opening of the Korean Honorary Consulate in Georgetown. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Acting Prime Minister Carl Greenwich expressed the hope that the establishment of the consul strengthens relations between the two countries. Appointed the role of consul as executive member of the private sector commission, Ramesh Duku. In pledging his worthiness of the position, he said he believes there are many markets in Korea which Guyana will be able to benefit from. As you can see, culturally, economically, and otherwise, we are different countries, which creates the opportunity for collaboration, business engagements, and other areas for mutually beneficial relations. The South Korean Consulate is one of 36 foreign representations in Guyana and one of 35 foreign representations in Georgetown. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. The voting process. Once you have been identified as the voter you claim to be, you would be given a ballot paper that is stamped at the back, top, and bottom halves in your presence. On the ballot paper, provision is made for you to vote twice. Once at the top section where you vote for the party or group of your choice in the proportional representation component, and once at the bottom section where you vote for the party, group, or individual of your choice in the first past the post or constituency component of the election. Make your mark in the box provided on the right of your choice. After you have voted, fold the ballot paper as shown by the election official, dip the first joint of your right index finger in the ink provided, and place the ballot paper in the ballot box that is there for this purpose. You would then have to peacefully depart the polling station. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-0277-9223-9653, email pro at gcom.org.gy, or visit GCOM's website at www.gcom.org.gy. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens available in tinted or clear complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. For the best in truck spares, Daff and Cummings, it's A1 Auto Value New Road Freedom Hoop on the west side. Check them out today for seals, alternators, filters, air valves. 
pistons and rings, air dryers, shocks, bearings, and a whole lot more. Parts and accessories for cars and minibuses. Call today on 254-0890. 64 New Road Freedom Hoop on the west coast of Demerara. A1 Auto Value. Performance without compromise. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Welcome back, you're watching MTV's News Update. Trinidad has urged Guyana not to stop exploring for oil. The Trinidad Republic former Prime Minister informed that Guyana must reinvest all revenues in petrol exploration. During a recent forum, former Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Kamala Prasad Bissessar, advised the Guyana not to squander its resource it will be getting from the oil and gas sector. One way Ghana should wisely use its money is to reinvest in oil exploration so that the sector can be sustained for years. Do not stop the exploration. Take back some of the money that you would make and reinvest into exploration and, of course, production. The first the barrel of oil is said to be drawn out in 2020 by U.S. company ExxonMobil that is currently exploring in Ghana's deep waters. Gan is a take from the sector when production starts, according to Finance Minister Winston Jordan, will be US a 300 million annually at lowest. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. A pastor from west coast of Demerara and one of his friends were killed in a vehicle smash-up in neighboring Suriname as they made their way to the capital Paris Maribo. One of the dead men had been identified as Apostle Patrick Tulsi of the Stream of Living Water Fellowship Church of Cornelia Ida, West Coast, Demerara. The other accident victim has not been identified but is believed to be a friend of the Apostle who was visiting from the United States. He is also believed to be a pastor. Reports out of Suriname about the crash have been sketchy, but news source understands that the two were on their way to the Suriname's capital this morning when their car PVV 3080 collided with a truck that was heading in the opposite direction. The car sprung out of control and toppled several times before coming to a stop at the side of the roadway. The two men were pulled from the mangled wreck but were both pronounced dead on the spot. Suriname's police are probing the incident. High Court Judge Gina Prasad yesterday dismissed the case filed by Opposition Commissioner at the Guyana Elections Commission Bibi Shadik over Communities Minister Ronald Bulkan's changes to several local authority areas, a move which the PPP deems as gerrymandering. Here are the details. Back in September, Opposition Commissioner at the Guyana Elections Commission, Bibi Shadik, had approached the court to issue a series of orders including to quash B Communities Minister Ronald Bulkan's order of holding local government elections in seven neighborhood Democratic councils since he failed to issue an order under the Local Democratic Organs Act before announcing the November 12 polls. These NDCs are Maruka Phoenix Park, Kitty Providence, Nile Cozier, Lamaha Yarocabra, Hararuni Yarocabra, Plecht Anchor Court Barad, and Weiberg Caracas. However, High Court Judge Gino Persaud ruled that the community's minister compiled with the law as set out in the Local Democratic Organs Act and the Local Authorities Elections Act chapter. The court noted that seven NDCs were in fact established in 1990 by Order No. 51 of 1990 in compliance with the Local Democratic Organs Act and the boundaries already established in 1990. Moreover, Justice Prasad, a staunch critic of the opposition, found that there was no specific legal requirement in the law for the minister to publish the boundaries of the NDCs or for LAAS for every successive election as contended by the applicant's attorney Anil Nandalal. Against this, the judge dismissed the case against Minister. Mr. Bulkan. Meanwhile, Shadik had also sought orders from the court against GCOM's chief elections officer, Keith Lowenfield, who went ahead to demarcate and re-demarcate constituencies' boundaries without consultations with electors, stakeholders and political parties. This too was dismissed by Justice Persaud, who also ruled on Friday that Attorney Nandalal failed to adduce any evidence that the CEO of GCOM had fixed the boundaries of the seven NDCs in usurpation of the minister's authority as alleged in his application. The judge noted that when specifically asked by the court to produce documents to show documents providing his case, 
The applicant, through her lawyer, could not produce any and as such, the court found there was no case against the second named respondent. In addition, the court also ordered that both parties, Balkan and Lowenfield, be paid costs of $150,000 each. During Friday's decision, Minister Boken was represented by a team from the Attorney General's chambers, including Attorney General Basil Williams, Solicitor General Kim Kite Thomas and State Solicitor Ayanna McCalman. Meanwhile, the Chief Elections Officer was represented by Attorney Royce Dale Ford. Shadik is likely to appeal the ruling. Chelsea Griffith, reporter for MTV's News Update. Ebony Jordan now joins us with today's Tips for Healthy Living. Moldy food has undesirable taste and texture and may have green or white fuzzy spots. While some types of mold can produce harmful toxins, other types are used to produce certain foods, including some cheeses. Mold is a type of fungus that forms multicellular thread-like structures. It's usually visible to the human eye when it grows on food and it changes a food's appearance. The food may become soft and change color, while the mold itself can be fluffy, fuzzy, or have a dusty texture. It produces spores that give it its color, which is typically green, white, black, or gray. Moldy food also tastes quite distinctive, or a bit like wet dirt. Likewise, moldy food may smell off. Even if mold is only visible on the surface, its roots may lie deep in the food. Mold needs moist, warm, organic matter to grow, so food is often the perfect environment. Thousands of different types of mold exist and are found almost everywhere in the environment. In addition to being present in food, it can also be found indoors in moist conditions. The main purpose of common food preservation techniques, like pickling, freezing, and drying, is to stop the growth of mold, as well as microbes that cause food spoilage. Common foods that can grow mold Fruits, including strawberries, oranges, grapes, apples, and raspberries. Vegetables, including tomatoes, bell peppers, cauliflower, and carrots. Bread, especially when it contains no preservatives. And cheese, both soft and hard varieties. Mold can produce toxic chemicals called mycotoxins. These can cause disease and even death, depending on the amount consumed, the length of exposure, and the age and health of the individual. In general, if you find mold in soft food, you should discard it. Soft food has high moisture content, so mold can easily grow below its surface, which can be hard to detect. Bacteria can also grow along with it. It is easy to get rid of mold on hard foods, such as hard cheese. Simply cut the moldy portion off. Generally, hard or dense food is not easily penetrated by mold. However, if the food is completely covered with mold, you should throw it away. Also, if you find mold, do not sniff it as this may cause respiratory problems. Coming up after the break, MTV's sports update. Stay with us. You're why you minding me business? I noticed you yesterday. You're there watching, 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 watching. Today you're there here again. Why you minding me business? I'm fed up with your nosy self. Yeah, baby, I just love your windows. Why are you bothering me window? Like your house singer window? What kind of window really in your house? I got some old Louvers windows that I need to change. Louvers! <laughs> this day and age, people still got Louvers windows. Girl, let let you in for a secret, right? Peace and got a special deal right now. You go down there, you buy 10 window, you get a free bathroom window. Oh, for the love of God, try with them Louvers window and go down to Peace and modernize. Peace and windows and doors. Serving Guyana with the highest quality windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. 
Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Me so much in this store, guys. Me Pio's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit? No, me know the secret. I'm like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody, Everybody know, know the secret. secret. <laughs> you can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick fix for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. Eligibility to vote. In order for you to vote in local government elections on the 12th November 2018, you must be 18 years or over, a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent or naturalization, or a Commonwealth citizen living in Guyana for one year or more, registered and living in the municipality or neighborhood democratic council or constituency in which you are desirous of voting to be able to vote under both the proportional representation and the constituency components of the election. You must be listed on the register of voters for the municipality or neighborhood democratic council and constituency in which you are desirous of voting. Every eligible citizen has the right and responsibility to vote at local government elections. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-0277-9 or 223-9653. Email pro at gcom.org.gy or visit GCOM's website at www.gcom.org.gy. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. 
Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. All it took was two overs for DeAndre Dutton to rip through the Bangladesh women's batting lineup, igniting a thrilling win in the first day of the 2018 ICC Women's World T20. The defending champions West Indies barely managed to scrape a discouraging 106 for 7 after losing the toss and being forced to bat. In reply, eight overs into the exciting chase, Bangladesh were already struggling with 28 for 3. Despite the gloomy first half of the game for the Windies women, the odds were in their favour as an incredible run-out ended the Asian side's innings. As wickets kept falling at regular intervals in favour of the West Indies, they were seen dancing on the pitch celebrating a looming victory. Dotton was the pick of the Windies bowlers, ending the night with a five-wicket haul, restricting Bangladesh to 46, the lowest T20 score. Captain of the Windies, Stephanie Taylor, said there were some difficulties with their batting, adding that the opening pacer took some crucial wickets. You were there for majority of the innings. Uh, was it challenging conditions or a little bit of indecision on the part of your batters? What would you put your fingers on that produced uh, that subpar batting performance? Yeah, I think, you know, the batting, the shot selection wasn't good. Um, and I, you know, to give it to the Bangladeshi, I, I thought they bowled excellent, you know. Um, you know, the opening pacer bowled really good, got some early wickets, crucial wickets. Woman of the match, Deandra Dottin, said she was confident in winning the match even before the halfway stage. Of course I was confident even before the first half finish. Um, I knew that no matter what total we put on the board that we are strong enough to defend it. The Bangladeshi women were left to use the very bandages the defending champions began their night with, with Dotting in no mood to lend a helping hand. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV's Sports Update. Still in cricket, as a senior West Indian cricketer himself, Dennis Ramnan believes the absence of the other seniors like Chris Gale and Andrew Russell and regular open Elvis Lewis has contributed immensely to the mismatch between India and the West Indies in the T20 series so far. The hosts have already wrapped up the three-match series, having taken a 2-0 lead in Lok now. But Ramning, speaking in Chennai on the eve of the final T20, remain resolute in the belief that players cannot be forced to play for country over franchise, especially since the reasoning behind these players' choices is to earn more money. Nevertheless, Ramnin felt if that was the availability of the seniors, the West Indies would have set up a much better show in India. West Indies returned to India for the first time since 2016 World T20 triumph. Remember for Carlos Bradway's magnificent sixth hissing of Ben Stokes to plunge the 19 of the final over. With the first T20 having taken place at Eden Gardens last week, the very venue where they lifted the World T20 trophy in 2016, Ramnit had expected his side to do better. But that did not happen and following the two heavy ODI defeats in the previous week, India's bowling attack was too strong according to Ramdin. Summing up West Indies' store of India thus far, Ramnin said that Koldeep Yakde's left arm wrist spin, which has fetched him 24 wickets across four months, was a major difference between the two sides. With the imminent exit of the current coach Sturlo, who moves to Hampshire after West Indies tour of Bangladesh, there's a soft that whether West Indies have gained on the law could be dissolved once a coach comes in. We tell you now that three technical officers of the Ghana Football Federation will participate in a CONCACAF license program scheduled for November 11 to 17 at the IMG Academy, Florida. The three technical development officers, Verlon Mills and Samson Gilbert, and youth development officer Brian Joseph, will be among others from the CONCACAF regions participating in the program aimed at developing young players from ages 13 to 19. According to GFF's technical director, Ian Greenwood, this continuous education is part of the coaching pathway to enhance the quality of the player's population. The CONCACAF C license is the next step in the coaching pathway, with the three candidates meeting all the prerequisites of this intense course. This is a natural progression from the license and the coaches upon their return will be required to share the knowledge acquired to the increasing population of coaches who have received their D license in Guyana. Chelsea Griffith reporter for MTV's Sports Update. And finally in sport, the Ghana Football Federation Always National Women's Development League continues this weekend in three regions as the tournament seeks to have continuous and consistent women's football in Guyana. 
In Georgetown, Fruit of Conquerors A team looked to continue their reign at Tuckville Ground when they faced off against Foxy Ladies earlier today. Meanwhile, in the ancient county of Berbice, action kicked off at number five ground, beginning with the West Side Conquerors FC against New Amsterdam United FC and Cougars FC versus Oriala Falcons FC. Madia will host one match featuring Madia Gold Getters versus Mikam Eagles. The GFF Always National Women's Development League, also sponsored by Ansa McCall Beverage Partner, iCool and Geico Construction, is part of the GFF strategy to develop women's football across the country. Chelsea Griffith, reporter for MTV Sports Update. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable, integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. And that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Nationalization of Burby's Bridge will impact future public-private partnerships, says GSMA. PPP urges residents to vote out the APNU AFC from the City Council to end corruption in the city. AFC is able to sit around back in police custody, this time for beating up a policeman. And in the Women's World T20, Western East Dotting grabs 5 for 5 as Bangladesh collapsed for 46. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar, thanking you for watching. Have a good night.